Hey there, entrepreneurs. My name is Sushant, and welcome to Trep Talks. This is the show where I interview successful e commerce entrepreneurs, business executives, and thought leaders, and ask them questions about their business story, and also dive deep into some of the strategies and tactics that they have used to start and grow their businesses. And today, I'm really excited to welcome Yanne Cleonen to the show. Yanne <laughs> is the founder and product director of Quiet On. QuietOn is a company that develops earplugs, which use active noise cancellation that assist with reducing background noises, such as hum of airplane engines, snoring, and helps users to get better sleep. And today, I'm going to ask Yanne a few questions about his entrepreneurial journey and some of the strategies and tactics that he has used to start and grow his business. So thank you so much for joining us today at TripTox, Yanne. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's it's my pleasure to be here. I hope I hope I didn't um, butcher your name too much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, it was quite well pronounced. The cool. Finnish names are not that easy. <laughs> cool, cool. So, um, very interested in all. Can you share a little bit about your product um, and yes. what, how how exactly it helps people? Yes. Yeah, so this is the charging case, and there's a really Earbuds. Um, actually, this is. So I will show that if I put it in my ear, you can get the idea of how small it is. So it is really fitting in this concrete area. So yeah. if you put head, it is really not even touching that. And that, that is how small the noise device needs to be. That uh, noise cancelling device that you can really sleep comfortably head or pillow. And and that's the that's the key thing. And and then. There is active noise cancelling inside, similar to what there is in the music listening device and, and, and so. Um, also, this is passive noise cancelling device at the same time. Also, the higher frequencies are cancelled quite well, like uh, what the electronics can't do. So we have the you know, best things of the both worlds, the active and passive. So this this is not really meant to like listen to music or anything. This is purely meant for sleep purposes. Yeah, exactly. So this doesn't even have the connectivity. So we decided at the beginning that we are making the one use case to, to perfection and no compromises on that. And that is the way how we are able to do it so small size because, you know, no connectivity and, and no, no, you know, DSP the running and consuming a lot of energy. We can have the smaller battery and, and so on and so forth. So is this, is this product like, completely unique in the market or are there other electronic manufacturers like i would assume apple and you know others also who are creating uh, their ear earbuds um, do they also incorporate this kind of functionality in their product or is this like completely different yeah so i would say that this is totally unique one in this category only sleeping device which have the active noise cancelling um, there are active noise cancelling Air muffs and also air plugs. For example, AirPods Pro, they have the active noise cancelling too, but um, the battery life is uh, four hours and they're way too big for sleeping. And like I said, we are the size that we can really sleep head on pillow and that, that oh. makes the big difference. And can you share a little bit about, um, you know, what motivated you to start this business? Uh, a little bit about your background, at what point did you get the idea and what motivated you to start this uh, business? Yeah, so I, I'm a physicist as a, as a background, what I studied, and then I went to Nokia to designing the mobile phones there. And um, I ended up leading this kind of innovation teams there. I was a product manager, sometimes project manager, and, and, and we will, you know, spend a lot of time to thinking about what are the important things for people, what are the user experiences, what we could improve, and, and, and so on. And made, I made quite many patents on that time for Nokia. And, and um, so that was my background. And then once I was in the business trip and I was testing these um, noise cancelling headphones in the airport, and I, I felt that how good it feels to have this silent bubble in the middle of the crowded airport. So, that, so that's just, just that feeling that you can decide when you select the silence and, and this kind of a feeling. And, that, that was actually the key driver for this product. So later on, when I mobile phone development was ended and I was thinking about the next thing to do, I already decided that I will establish my own company. 
And I have a, like a you know list of innovations what I was thinking that could be like a beneficial or good good stuff. Um, but this was the most important. If if I can bring this active noise cancelling in so small size that you could sleep with it, um, that would be the best product. And there there it started. That was the original thought. Cool. So when you got this idea, what was the um, you know how much time? What did you do next? Like, did you think about starting doing product development did you think about funding how did you start bringing your idea to to reality yeah in my case it started that i i started to looking at the right people who would help me and i um, ended up this matti nisula which was actually my old colleague from a multimedia team from nokia times and i was asking from him that is it possible to make this uh, active noise cancelling so small size that you could sleep with it and and he said that i don't know but but let's try <laughs> and that is what we started we together just two of us started to you know googling up that what are the smallest microphones and speakers and how the active noise cancelling actually works we had to like basic principles in our mind but we started to de- learning those and then started building the simulation models and and doing the signal processing in in the in the model level and then ended up to making actual working prototypes. Matt is really talented in electronics and he was like manually soldering under the microscope the, the first prototypes which the, I would say the circuit board was like a size of the fingernail or something like that. And then we have the small batteries and speakers and um, we used hot glue and nail polish to make it together. So it was looking ugly, but it was functioning very well. So the noise cancelling performance was, was really good. and. Then we started to making usability tests and everybody was saying that this is just a great idea and th- th- there it started. So actually that was the prototype what we were introducing, for example, in Finnair headquarters, this Finnish airline, this um, head of marketing there. And um, I was introducing that and he was testing the device. I had these small speakers and, and subwoofer in the meeting room making this airplane cabin noise. And he was testing that, that, okay, this is working really well, that if you make it this look a little bit better, um, let's start the business together, that we could do <laughs> usability tests for you, and, and they, perhaps, perhaps this could be even sold in thinner planes and all that. And there it started. Then I called to back home and said that, yeah, we need to establish a company. It seems to be that we even have the customers and everybody's loving the idea. Yeah, that was the start. So it seems like you are more of the product and marketing person and the other gentleman is more of the engineer who designed the, the item. He, is he also like a co-founder of the company or? Yes, yes. Um, there was also a couple of other people, but we were like major stakeholders. And I would say that two as me and Matti are the, the founders. And um, I think that this is quite traditional <laughs> setup that Matti is really in the tech and, and solving problems that not many people in the world can solve. And I have been more like, a, you know, product manager and, and, and also the project manager in that sense that organizing things and, and making decisions that how it looks and, and what are the sales books, what are the sales channels, where to get the funding and, and these kind of things. So how much time did it actually took you um, and your partners to come up with that initial prototype was it like a six month period from idea to prototype? Uh, um... I would say less. It was like uh, two to three months or something that we had oh, wow. functional prototypes first ones. Cool, cool. Uh, uh, and I know that you had uh, uh, you did you did uh, quite a successful crowdfunding campaign. Can you share a little bit about that? Um, did you like in the, initially? Did you and the co-founders invest some of your money also? Um, actually, it was that uh, when we started the company where we had a couple of people joining us and, you know, $20,000 or something like a really small amount of money. But in Finland, um, the government are supporting these kind of startups. If you have a really good idea, yeah, that, that it can go bigger. So that was the level that we ended up to having this um, enough money to get this first proto series in in the level that there was like a 50 pairs of really good looking devices. So we were able to do this usability tests with Finnair and getting great results from there. 
and 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 you know evidence that it, it now we have a really good product there. But it wasn't really ready for the mass production at that time. But we were able to do the design quite uh, quite well. Um, and then we went to this Indiegogo campaign, and I would say that perhaps one uh, ten thousand for the video uh, and uh, some photos with the professional uh, marketing people. And then we did the rest ourselves, making this campaign and, and writing everything out. So it was maybe less than fifteen thousand dollars level what we were spending for the setting of the campaign. But it was it was quite <laughs> quite successful already. That um, I I was discussing with uh, one of my friends, which had had like a quite successful campaign early, and he was giving the best tips how to, how to do it, and and he was saying that. The, the start is everything that you need to get it like a quick start and then these uh, algorithms start to be working for you and, and that is actually what we did that uh, we we collected long email lists from our LinkedIn contacts and those so we have perhaps 2,000 emails or 3,000 um, and the launch day we are sending emails to our colleagues and friends and all of that that please go and support us and, and buy the device and it was like a first day sales, it was uh, perhaps $10,000 or, or a little bit more. But that was already enough that Indiegogo algorithm set up as on a front page, like a trending campaign. Hmm. And then when people in California saw our, <laughs> our idea, it started to hitting in and next day it was like a $50,000. And then it's the day after that, we are close to 100000 It was going like a super fast start there. And um, and the whole campaign it lasted almost a year, but it was one point three million dollars. Wow, that's 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 a pretty good boost to 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 any startup company, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So what um, what do you do next? Like, do, do you have a patent on this product? Yes, we have actually a quite strong one. So our patent is the main claim is that if the product is smaller than certain dimensions, I mean this uh, length and height. And if it's if the audio panel is in a certain direction, and if it has the active noise cancelling, it's then in our patent. So if, you know, Sony or Apple will make the music listening device a little bit smaller than what they have it today, mm -hmm. and if there is active noise cancelling, it is in our patent. Okay. It's covering those two. So it's... Uh, I would say that this whole sleep segment with active noise cancelling, this product category is ours. Okay, well, so you haven't seen any like Chinese copycats come up with like a similar kind of a thing selling on Amazon or something? No, 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 I haven't seen that yet. Okay, okay, that's um, good. And, and actually we, we launched the first device in, in the Indigo Kovasi 2016. So they would have had time already. Okay. Yeah. But uh, so, so I think you are the first uh, electronics product uh, company founder that I'm interviewing. And it's, it's interesting because to me, it seems like electronics category is not an easy category. Like you really have to be very, very different. Can you share a little bit about what your experience is? Like, do you think that you can continue having... Um, a unique position in the market, like in this category. It, what What are your thoughts on the the whole electronics category and playing in this in this category? Yeah, of course. Like a, as a comparison to the software, that the scalability is not that fast. That because when you when you grow, you need to have money for the materials, and and you need to be working beforehand. And now when they're having this kind of a little bit crisis in manufacturing. In all the electronics world that that the components are missing um we have been doing that quite well and we haven't been able to, or needed to stop the, the factory but still there is some limitation but at the same time i i feel that our, our mission is to be synonym for the sleep air parts the quiet on will mean that this new product category what what we just innovated that will be named quiet on in the future we have the strong patent for that and we have really good device and and we will make even more good devices in the in the same segment and continue growing in this area um and the market segment itself is huge it's like uh, 
hundreds of millions of people are struggling with the snoring and other noises which are uh, affecting for the sleep. So a lot of room, room for growth there. Are you, uh, which markets are you selling? Are you selling globally or uh, have you focused on like certain markets? Yeah, we are, we are selling globally from our web shop, um, but I would say that the USA and Canada are dominating perhaps 60% of the total sales. And um, and then there's like Australia, UK, Western Europe, those countries which are perhaps the the, the price point and, and range is a little bit like a limiting the that Forex Africa is not um, that big. In. Have your uh, product, um, you know, when you see like company like Apple or something, they, they every year, like they come up with a new version of the product, even though it's even a minor incremental change. Have you been improving your product? Is there like a research and development part in your company where, you know, your, your, your product has evolved uh, since 2016? Yes. Um... We are not making updates every year because we, we don't have the, the competition in the category in that okay. sense. Like the mobile phones are doing that. But still, we have the third generation product out because um, we have been able to do better product learning from the customers and 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 I would say a little bit fixing the flaws what has been in the previous product. And um, the it has been always smaller and smaller and more comfortable. That has been the that uh, how we are being improving the, the product. And uh, for example, in this third generation, now we have also the uh, battery in the charging case. So when you charge this case, you can use it like a whole week and you are always always full of battery. And, and those kind of things, what we have been um, improving on, on the run. Um, but of course, we will continue also investigating that how the device could be even better in the future. Are you manufacturing in China? I would assume like as an electronics device, th that would be the least expensive way to manufacture. Actually, we are, we are manufacturing in Poland, in okay. EU. So it's a Finnish company, which has the factory there. Um, of course, we were also thinking about the China, but in, in our product, there is like, a, it's, it needs to be manufactured really precisely. I mean, it needs to be airtight, and there are many work phases that happens under the micro scope and uh, and also we have the audio testing that we have the this kind of automated test systems there that all the blocks will go this kind of certain processes and we need to be able to follow those like online and also it's good that we can fly easily there in the factory and, and find new things if, if it needed what was the process of finding the manufacturer for you did you already have contacts and you knew like which manufacturer you wanted to connect with or was there a search process yeah, the, the process actually started that we first hired uh, people who know. So uh, old, um, it was actually from the Nokia side that uh, this Hanno Lehti set off. Um, somebody knew that from effect, uh, our networks that he had been working in Nokia factories in Finland and in USA and in China, and also in the Huawei factory in China, and uh, that he would be the, our guy and we hired, hired him and then started asking that how we are selecting the factory. And, and he's, he made sort of shortlisting the items that which are the important ones and uh, started uh, contacting and getting this kind of, uh, you know, preliminary prices. And then we started the traveling. And I think that we went like uh, four different factories. So it's really going to quality processes and thinking about that, how we would cooperate with them. And, and there were also factories from, from China at that time in, in the game. But we then decided that well, let's go with the Europe. So, so I assume like there is definitely a cost to pay for that, right? You, know, may, you may have maybe made a higher margin if you went to China, but uh, I guess in terms of quality, maybe it's kind of a trade-off. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I would say that, um, you know, labor cost is perhaps almost double in Poland compared to China. But of course, we try to do a lot of like an automatic system and, and this kind of a, and, and we couldn't afford to fail. <laughs> that was also something that when you're a startup, if you, if you put the bad product out and you need to call it back, I think that, yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of marketing, can you share a little bit like right now, as you've grown, how has your marketing changed? What is your 
customer acquisition strategy, what channels work best in terms of acquiring new customers and, and, uh, um, and helping them to activate and buy. Yeah, um, if, if looking back that in the first product, um, we realized that that was a little bit too big for sleeping. The customer feedback, it's not that good for that use case. And then we ended up like pivoting the whole whole marketing story for Traveler at that time and started to contacting the airlines. And we managed to get it in in-flight sales for really big airlines like Lufthansa, Air France, and there was a Singapore Airlines at most. And actually it was selling really well there, like a best-selling item in Singapore Airlines. So that was our strategy a long time. And, and we were not like a selecting the use case that much because it was working well in many occasions. But now when we had this third generation product out and it's excellent for the sleeping and solving the original, the problem that <laughs> this company was established for. Um, now we are focusing on the sleep use case, selling in our own web shop. And, and if people know that there is the uh, active noise cancelling or the good solutions for the sleeping use case, if people go to and write in Google that best earbuds for sleeping or best earplugs for sleeping, they will find the quiet one. And when and if that happens and they will come to our web page, we are selling really well. So the conversion rates are are excellent, even in the in the first visits, because this is so unique and, and well well matching product. But the thing is that people don't know that this kind of new product category exists. Mm. So that's why I need to somehow raise the in interests and information. And there's like a two tracks what we are doing. The one is, of course, the traditional that we have the peer agency, which is conducting the, the reporters, first tech reporters, but also lifestyle and those things. And typically, we're just sending the devices. They are testing. They like it, write a nice article, and we get the new, new customers coming in. Um, but other thing is, which is even more important are the influencers. So people who are interested about the sleep and health and well-being and 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 not like a, you know Kim Kardashian mm. like hundred million followers, but something mm. that have ten thousand or hundred thousand followers. Mm. But the followers are really looking up to mm. that what what the, the, they are doing, and those have been really successful for us. And typically also sending devices they like and tell about it. That is how it goes. Very interesting. Um, so you said that you're shipping globally. Um, so you get the order, it's direct to consumer. You get the order on your web shop. Uh, you're shipping it out through your own warehouses in Finland. Um, can you share a little bit about that uh, fulfillment process, shipping process? And are there any challenges to fulfilling uh, internationally? Yeah, so nowadays the system is actually that when we are making people making order in our web shop, it's automatically it's integrated in our factory and we have the delivery center there. Okay. So it came straight out of the delivery center and then we are using the PHL and those other uh, logistic vendors there with us. And then additionally, we have also our delivery center in USA. So we have the own, own warehouse system there that we are sending you know, some thousands of units there and then it's like a fast delivery inside the USA. So th those two things is how we, how we are doing. Of course, at the beginning, when we started the first Indiegogo campaign, we have three person in the company and we managed to sell to the 120 different countries and we didn't really did figure out in that sense that it might be quite difficult to send the devices, but, but um, it wasn't then that bad. We started to calling this DHL and, and Started offers and and you know it's it's normal web shop. There are systems and people have solved those issues before us. It's more like just finding the best team. Uh, but the, perhaps the problem is something that there are like a, you know Brexit and and those kind of things that um, the how, how the is there any extra expenses? For example, if you're sending it to Brazil or or those that there's like an extra taxes which are really significant. It might be like a, a 60 to 70 percent taxes yeah. added, to, added to price. And then it starts to be that customers are not that happy after that. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's a big challenge where, you know, an international customer receives the item and they're hit with a big uh, imp import 
duty customs charge and then that's kind of uh, so uh, do you like inform the international customers beforehand that there may be international costs that your company country is going to may charge and those kind of things or yeah yeah that, that that's true that that is what we need to cover although people who are living in those countries they know they they have been ordering stuff online and it's you know one interesting thing that I noticed about your site, you're using WooCommerce. Um, so I was curious, um, why not uh, something like Shopify, which seems more scalable, easily scalable? Um, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, perhaps that's a like, little bit like <laughs> in its history in that sense that it was like uh, three years ago when we were updating the web pages in that time. and. I think one of the key drivers was that we need to have the web shop integrated well in the web pages, that you don't need to jump for the one page to other and totally different experience, but it feels like a natural flow there. And, and in that time, WordPress and WooCommerce were the, <laughs> you, know, you know, word of art in that sense, that that was how, how the things were done. I think that nowadays Shopify would be even better in, in many sense than, and, and we should perhaps rethink that our strategy also what is the best for the you know customer experience with you. What does your team look like right now? How many people? Team, um, we have um, around 12, 13 people now. And um, we have all the R&D, which is, I would say, three person. Three and a half. I, I'm, I'm jumping between R and D and 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 the marketing side, and then we have um, four people marketing team. I would say two is focusing on the customer care and and that part, and then one is mostly PR and and uh, this kind of communications, and one person is just looking that the, our online machinery works. You know the. The Google ads and Facebook ads and those budgets are in the correct level and, and everything is working and running smoothly. And um, then we have a little bit like management for looking at the you know, CEO and um, financial direction, directors and, and those looking about the money. Cool. Uh, final question, you know, as an entrepreneur, everyone in every entrepreneur's journey, there's always mistakes made, there's failures, there's lessons learned. Can you share like your biggest mistake or failure as you were building your company and what can other founders learn from it? Yeah, I, I think that, um, let's say, what are the biggest failures? Perhaps is that we have been launching the new product generation, even though they haven't been ready yet. So we have been estimating that they will come like within a couple of months, but then we have ended up, you know, technical difficulties and, and by solving those out, it has been like a really difficult to wait because people have been purchased it like uh, already. And, and also it kills the previous product sales when you're selling the new version a bit, yeah. a bit beforehand. So, but also like it has been like mostly my personal failure that I have been so excited about the new products and experiences. I've been using the prototypes at that time already and somehow just <laughs> didn't think it through. So what what would you do differently, like in the future? <laughs> would you would you would you wait or? I think in the future that we need to have the mass production up and running. We need to be sure that we are able to ship it right away when we start selling them. So. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to move on to our rapid fire round, and in this round, I'm going to ask you a few quick questions, and you have to answer them maybe in one word or or two words. So the first one is a book recommendation for entrepreneurs or business people in 2022 and why? The hard things about hard things. I think that's just, just like <laughs> excellent book. Cool. Uh, an innovative product or idea in the current e-commerce, retail or tech landscape that you feel excited about? Yeah, I, I think this ordering is really, really cool. You know, this uh, heart rate monitor and sleep tracker. Oh, wow. Actually, I, I, I know the guys who found this company and they're also going from all of them. It's um, really cool. I thought it be like a unicorn level company nowadays. So, so is that also a Finnish company? Yes, it's actually coming from the same city in Oulu. What is the but name the of it? Nowadays, 
Oura. Oura oh. ring. Oura. Oh, Oura, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, a business or productivity tool or software that you would recommend or productivity tip? Maybe I would say like V transfer is helping me most okay. because working with the multimedia companies and others. So, yeah. Cool. Um, a startup or a business that you think is currently doing great things. I know you already mentioned this this company, but um, any other startup or business that you think is doing great? Yeah, I think this uh, company called Neurosonic, also coming from this area, they are making this kind of a relaxation, relaxation bed, not massaging, but giving this kind of signal for your nervous system and, and relaxing you. That excellent product. I just we were in the CES in the same exhibition booth, so I was okay. just thinking about that. Cool. Um, a peer entrepreneur or business person whom you look up to or someone who inspires you? Yeah, I, I think that the Elon Musk is something okay. that we look like, yeah. <laughs> at. Yeah. yeah, I think Elon Musk is... Uh, there's so every every entrepreneur is looking up. <laughs> um, <laughs> final final question: best business advice you ever received, or you would give to other entrepreneurs? I think that in, in the text word that when you're showing your first prototype to others, if you don't feel ashamed a little bit how it looks, then okay. you are too late. Okay, <laughs> that's that's a good advice. Um, well, those were all the questions I had. Thank you, Yane, for uh, sh- for coming on, for sharing uh, your story, for sharing your uh, product and, and some of the strategies and tactics that you have used to start and grow your business. Um, if people want to buy your product, get in touch with you, how can they do that? Just go on our webpage, buyiton.com, and there you can have, find the webshop and also a lot of more information about the product. And um Thank you for having me. It was really nice to be part of you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.